Hey, good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner. Live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop, I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in this morning. We do it every Saturday from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. This morning, we're going to talk soccer. Jefferson County Soccer Association, uh, Brian Sockleben, and we'll talk with him in just a second. Of course, they've got the fall sign-ups coming up today. We do it typically the second Saturday in June. We talk with Brian. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Uh, it's that time again. It's that time. Yes, it's come around pretty. It seemed like it was just yesterday we, <laughs> we were doing this. You know, and and it creeps up on us every year, and we talk about you know where does the time go and things pass so quickly and this and that. But you know, you're talking about fall soccer signups and and as seasons go, and I talk with different coaches, especially you know, in parks department and things like that. If you don't work ahead of the game you're working from behind and soccer this particular situation same thing if you don't yeah. work ahead of the game you're behind exactly we try to get out and get as early as we can we've already actually began taking some registrations mm -hmm. we had a uh, we just conducted a, a camp recently uh, about probably three weeks ago pretty successful camp mm -hmm. had about 43 players from the local area that participated in that so it was um, a good fundraising thing as well for JCSA well and talk a little bit about, and, I, and we do every year, but I, I think it's important to go back and, and look at the background of, of JCSA, the Jefferson County Soccer Association, and how long has it been in existence? Where did it come from? What was the idea and the concept? And it's It's been around, actually, since the mid-1980s. Uh, around, I think it was actually 1986 or 87. They got, it had actually started, and actually Paul DeLamerts and myself were just having this conversation with a lady from outside that lives outside Jefferson County was asking me some information, basically the same question. You know, where did you guys originate from? Never heard of you. I told her the first thing is, to find anything about us is to go on our Facebook page, uh, with Jefferson County Soccer Association. You go on, you like it, you get all of our information, all of our updates. But been around since the mid '80s. Uh, we've uh, typically had anywhere between six and ten board members that keep things going. Uh, I've been around with the program for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. uh, all my kids participate in JCSA, so I enjoy it. I enjoy working with the kids and uh, getting prepared for to play at the next level. Uh, getting them more comfortable where they can move into the junior high programs and, and, and pick things up pretty quick there. What's your, your age group for this? For the Fall League, we offer it for ages 3 up to uh, 13. Uh, we've got uh, basically breaks now. We have what we call an under 14, uh, under, sorry, an under 4 league, under 6 league, under 8, under 10, and under 13. Mm -hmm. So basically we take kids from 3 to 13 years of age. Each of them play on different size fields that are appropriate for their, for their right. age groups. And, they, and the number of kids we've put on the field is basically age appropriate as well. You know, of course, the younger kids, you know, we don't play with goalies. Right. You know, we put them out there, and it's just, uh, you know, we try to teach them to spread out, but that's <laughs> not the easiest thing to do at a young age group. But the older they get, we seem to see them pick it up, and um, so we see it paid off at the high school levels. I've watched a lot of high school games and see some of the same kids participating mm -hmm. and see some kids actually go to play in college that uh, were part of our program years ago. You start out as early as three, and there's always the debate of how early is too early. Three seems to like a, a good age. It seems to be. Yeah, we've actually picked up some of that just from the camps that we do. Mm -hmm. um, we know obviously you're, it's you're, you're still dealing with a kid that's uh, the, uh, they want to do somersaults, they want to pick grass, <laughs> they want to do things like that out there. So you got to keep them as, as active as as possible. Uh, you can't really work on too much of the fundamentals at age three, mm -hmm. but you can kind of teach them mm -hmm. just very basic stuff. So. And you look at, at, at the three-year-olds, and, and again, just starting out, uh, and it's, it's i got to imagine the patience of, of coaches have to be at, at the highest level, especially at the earlier ages, because, you know, kids are going to be kids. Absolutely. We've got uh, very fortunate to have a great group of coaches. Uh, a lot of them, of course, are, are parents of the children that they're, uh, they're participating with. Uh, and there's a lot of people who are really scared of the game at first, mm -hmm. not sure if they want to get into coaching. And I always tell them and remind them, getting in with your, your, your child at age three and four, coaching at that age level, it pays off. Mm -hmm. uh, you start picking things, the, the game up a little bit quicker a little bit not that you're pressured to teach you know very right. uh, strong stuff about the game but uh, the longer you stay in it the more you pick up that's basically where I began I, mm -hmm. I began working with my kids at the younger ages and then uh, progressed with them as they got older so um, I've got to I have a love for the game you know I follow the little city of the FC program they mm -hmm. won their um, championship last year and now the uh, Cincinnati program they're actually becoming part of uh, MSL next year mm -hmm. uh, major or actually MLS they're gonna be a MLS program so hopefully We'll see that with Lul, but um, it's it's fun to fun to watch and take the fun to be part of. 
soccer, and we when we talk about this, we've talked about this on the program before. Soccer as a whole, around the country, around the nation, has has grown in size. It's grown in interest. Why? I don't know. I'm just, everybody always talks about America's game being football, but uh, we're in the transition phase. I mean, I think soccer is really starting to pick up more and more. You're starting to see more of these buildings and these uh, so soccer complexes going up. Uh, as I travel from Madison to northern Indiana, back when I used to go watch or visit my daughter mm -hmm. uh, up in Indianapolis, you would see um, soccer fields getting bigger and bigger and complexes being built and stuff. So not that we have a, a big indoor complex here in Madison. That, that's something maybe in the future that'll, sure. that'll happen. But um, we do have a pretty decent size um, complex or field area. We've been complimenting our fields that we've got here. We Back in the days we had travel soccer um, in, the, in the springtime. We had a lot of people from northern Kentucky, uh, uh, up north, from actually northern teams from uh, Indiana, Fort Wayne area, would come down and compliment us on our fields mm -hmm. and, and the layout of the field. Of course, one part of our field is the old Madison High School soccer field, right. so we were very fortunate to take over that when they moved to the junior high. Mm -hmm. You look at, at um, where, the, where the soccer program has gone, and that's you know kind of in general for all the schools, it's gotten more um, publicity, it's gotten bigger. Um, you guys are kind of a feeder program into the high school and junior high. Um, do you kind of feel like you're that, that minor league team kind of getting everybody ready to go? And even the ones that may not play at the next level in, in junior high or high school, they at least get a taste of what soccer is all about. Yeah, well, I think with us, it's a, it's a very good chance to get um, get your feet wet. Sure. In a game of soccer, um, not just really from the from the games that we pr we play in the um, in the fall, but we've also with these other camps we've got. We've uh, we've brought in we uh, uh, got with a group called Challenger Sports about nine years ago, and started doing this British soccer camp mm -hmm. every summer. We actually that's actually coming up June the uh, 18th, and it runs that full week. Uh, it's basically like some coaches they send over here from England, mm -hmm. uh, very knowledgeable individuals. Not to say they're more knowledgeable from, than anybody in the U.S., but they are very right. knowledgeable coaches. Um, uh, great kids to work with. They're a young uh, group of guys that do the coaching, but uh, and they send in enough coaches to, to handle the amount of kids that sign up for it. So we've been very satisfied with that. Uh, so I think just you know getting with the with the uh, camps and stuff. I think it's a good good way to get the kids oriented with the game and working with us. Talking with Brian Sockler, uh, Jefferson County Soccer Association. We'll come back to McDonald's and talk more coaches corner. That's coming up next on Works 96.7. Welcome back to Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. We're talking Jefferson County Soccer Association with uh, Brian Sockleben. Brian, I know uh, today you've got uh, the the uh, open registration. Uh, let's kind of get in a little bit more detail about what that's about today. We didn't really hit on that. I know open registration today going to run from 11 to 3 at the sports complex. And, again, it, it goes back to the, uh, you know what, you're, you're registering for fall, but it's June. Yep, and like I say, we, you mentioned that earlier, we do uh, try to get into this as early sure. as we possibly can. Um, we start typically every June uh, in doing this. We, we do this the second Saturday and the fourth Saturday of the month. So basically, we'll be there today from 11 to 3 and back there at the complex again on Saturday, June the 23rd from 11 to 3. If you go over there, you're gonna we're gonna have signs posted. You'll you'll be able to find this. We're next to a large parking lot that's very close to the um, the kids um, playground area. So um, we'll have sign up forms for for not only the fall league today, but we'll also have we've got an upcoming mash camp that takes place at the end of July. That's a camp that's actually conducted by local high school coaches, mm -hmm. and they bring in their players to provide assistance to to get a little more one on one with the kids. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the British soccer camp. Um, yeah, a lot of people have interest in that, really don't know how to go about getting signed up for it. Uh, the easiest way is to go on their website, uh, which is www.challengersports.com. And if you look for uh, Jefferson County Soccer Association as the host site, you'll find us and you get you get signed up that way. We also have um, brochures or registration forms that you can show up today and we'll give you one of those you can fill it out. It's probably best to fill it out and get it turned in today. That way you're guaranteed a, a spot there for the camp. And uh, we like to let the um, 
let that company know, the Challenger Sports Group, know exactly how many kids we anticipate being mm-hmm. part of it so they can plan accordingly with their coaches. So uh, very happy with the way that that program has run and probably continue to, to work with uh, Challenger Sports for some time. And, and kind of talk a little bit about how, how important it is for, for not only the JCSA but the, the players involved to have Challenger Sports involved with, with a program like this. You know, I, I, with Challenger Sports, um, years ago, this is even, you know, probably 10, 11 years ago, we had some other camps that we were um, uh, had been basically participating with for a while. Mm-hmm. We thought it was time for a change. Some of the stuff we, they were doing was kind of the same thing every year to year. Uh, Challenger Sports uh, with their British soccer camp kind of mixes things up a little bit more. And uh, the way they do it every year, it's basically I've monitored again that they kind of change it from year to year, mm-hmm. bring in different coaches every year so you get a, a different taste of a guy with some knowledge. He may have the specialty that he has more knowledge of than others as far as defense or offense and so forth. So it's a, it's a good way to get the kids out there um, acquainted with um, coaches they've never seen before and coaches that are very knowledgeable of the game. And um, uh, they work with uh, kids in the mornings. That you, can, you can do a morning program. You can do an afternoon program. You can do a full day program if you're up to it, mm-hmm. if your child's up to it, I should say. So um, it's a very good um, opportunity for your kids to get out there and, and learn a lot about the game. Um, our MASH camp, working with the high school coach, very good opportunity to work with um, some good high school coaches as well as their players, knowledgeable players that are probably were at one point part of JCSA. Mm-hmm. So very been very happy with that. We've done the MASH camp now. I think it's probably over 10 years plus. And uh, it's a pretty cheap camp. It's one of the cheapest soccer camps you'll ever participate in, join up for. It's uh, $40 for the first player or child in the family and $35 for each additional sibling. And we do offer some uh, goalkeeper clinic, give us some interest. Uh, we missed that on this last camp we did. There was some interest in that, but um, I never had an opportunity that week to actually work with the kids on the goalie stuff. But we will for sure get that in on this MASH camp for anybody that's interested in learning how to be um, and be a goalie. You work pretty close with high school coaches around the area. Yeah, we we uh, we stay in contact with them. Um, we uh, when we do this mash camp, we try to rotate around from high school to high school, or even we've got some junior high coaches that participate in it. Um, it's a way. It's a fun, good fundraiser for them as well. We give a, a portion of what we bring in to those coaches to help with their athletic program, uh, to help with the kids getting their jerseys and so forth. So um, I try to maintain a pretty good relationship with uh, the local high school coaches. I know Madison's going through some change is right now with mm-hmm. uh, with the men's coach but um, I am I do know who the the, the, the women's coach is mm-hmm. and the junior high coach of course Jamie Kelsey she's on our soccer board she sure. is the current and has been for a while the junior high coach at Madison so I've had a lot of uh, good feedback about her and how she works with the kids and how she prepares those those kids for the high school level so do you see more boys or girls come through JCSA Kind of a mix, mm-hmm. and uh, all of our programs, I failed to mention earlier, all of our programs are co-ed. Mm-hmm. So years and years ago when JCAC first started, uh, I think primarily we were just um, we had a boys program and a girls program, and we saw the need that where we could probably mix it up and get a higher amount of teams per each age group, mm-hmm. and it's paid off. Right. I've never gotten any negative feedback mm-hmm. about it. Uh, of course, you know, the boys are not sure about playing with the girls, and the girls are not <laughs> sure that the boys are going to be too physical. But it all works out, you know. And um, when Ashley gets on here in a second, she could probably mention that to you that yeah. it, it it does work out. You know, they enjoy playing with the boys and 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 the boys with the girls. So all my girls, you know, they when they played in the program, they were playing with with the boys, and it pushed my kids to be stronger players. So mm-hmm. they want to show that hey, you know, I'm just yeah. as good as these boys are out here. So um, it's always worked out for our program to to mix it up, do the co-ed. Ryan, who'd you bring with you today? I've got uh, Julie Bell and her daughter Ashley here today um they've been part of our program for a while julie's been a coach with jcsa for the last probably three or four years we were just asking talking about that this is just before we came on here i'm trying to figure out exactly how long she's been with us but julie's uh an ex high school high school player for madison uh, i'm not sure who your coach was at the time but um Julie uh, has a, a, a good knowledge of the game. I've uh, been very satisfied, very happy with the way she works with the kids and a lot of fe- positive feedback from her uh, her players. So, mm-hmm. um, and, and, of course, Ashley is going to give you some some feedback as far as her uh, her participation in our program. Ho- hopefully it's all positive. I'm sure it is. <laughs> She's got a big smile on her face, so it gives me a good feeling. All right, so let's let's talk with Ashley. Good morning. Hi. Hold that up close to you. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. You like playing soccer? Yes. How come? What's what's so fun about it? Um. Well. There's a lot of running, isn't there? Yes, there is a lot of running. Yeah. And 
and the games, they're very fun. Um, uh -huh. If so, if you lose a game, it doesn't matter because it it's still fun and mm -hmm. you still feel better about yourself. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of good coaches, and they're all very nice. Especially mom, right? <laughs> Especially mom. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So why do you, I mean, you 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 like doing all the running? Running isn't very fun, no. No, running isn't very fun. So you're one of many kids that I've had in this program in the last, I don't know how many years, that said running is not fun. So you're not the first person that said it, so that's good. Um, what do you like most about soccer? I mean, what position do you play? What do you, do you just run and kick the ball, or do you like, are you a goalkeeper, or how do you, how, what do you do? Um, I think I like defense best because I'm best at it, mm -hmm. and I think I can, I think it might be, the best position I'm in at yeah. all times yeah. during the sport. Wow. Not many kids have said they like playing defense better. So that's good. That's good. So what do you want to play soccer when you're in when you're in like junior high and high school? Yeah, I want yeah. to play it in yeah. junior high and high school. Yeah. So how long have you been playing soccer? How many years do you know? Um, I think about five or four years. Yeah. Got started playing soccer and now you, you really like it. Yeah. Good. All right. Pass the mic over to Mom. I'll talk to her for a minute. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. Um, what's your involvement? Why? Why do you? Um, well, I was asked a few years ago to um, be on the board, mm -hmm. and so I agreed to be on the board, and then got asked to be a coach. So, <laughs> and then Ashley took interest in wanting to play. Yeah. So. Uh, just decided to help out and play and just help out with the board and I played soccer as a when I when I started at five years old so yeah. and I've always liked playing so yeah it's it, been. is it is it difficult being a coach uh, not really mm -hmm. especially with the JCSA right. you, I mean it's more I tried to tell the kids you know this is about fun mm -hmm. learning the game it doesn't matter if we win or lose. It's just getting to know, and, and like mm -hmm. Brian said, preparing you for junior high, high school level. Right. And, so. and teaching kids at whatever age, you know, whether it's three or 13, it, there's always that challenge in there to get them to understand what you're trying to tell them. But patience as a coach has got to be at a high level. Yes, and I think it, uh, it, the, the older you get, or and the, the older the kids get, and mm -hmm. as you move up, like I've moved up with Ashley, yeah. it just seems like, you know, trying to get the kids to listen to you <laughs> and <laughs> play in their position that you, that you want them to play in. Right. Do you but, think that, that if, if, did you encourage her to play, or is it something she just kind of took upon herself? Um, I think she really just took it upon herself. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, we would play around in the backyard, and right. then as, you know, became a coach, you know, she started playing, and mm -hmm. and she really took to it and, yeah. and likes it. But I've, I've kind of made her play every position, mm -hmm. and... Like she said, she likes defense the best. That's cool. That you don't see that very no, much. No, defense is a very hard position to play. Yeah, very where, hard. Where do you see the sport of soccer going in the next five years? I mean, as I talked with Brian about it, it's it's gotten more popular and it continues to be more popular year after year after year. You see more kids participating every year. Yes, I I, I think we do and. When I was younger, it seemed like it was it was popular, and then it like dropped off, and mm -hmm. now it's really picking back up. And it's good to see that the kids are are playing, and right. even the kids that I coach, you know, they talk about you know World Cup, and <laughs> so th they're paying attention. Right, and and kids on the soccer field, like any other kid on on a sports field or team or whatever, makes them do something positive. Gets them, gets them off their phones and in front of the TV and this kind of thing. So. Right, and they're always teaching me. The kids teach me more than I teach them sometimes, I think. So. Yeah. You have a lot of fun doing it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it's it very rewarding, mm -hmm. and and I love love hanging with the kids yeah. and, and right. teaching them, rubbing some of my knowledge off on them, and yeah. like I said, you know, they teach me too. Yeah. So. Brian, one of the things we want to mention before we wrap things up, of course, you've got sponsorships that uh, help out with uh, – it's like everything else there's nothing for free and everything costs money so you've got to have some outside help to make sure this uh, happens for you every year absolutely and we've been very thankful for some some great sponsors over the years um, and again the sponsorships 
help us with the um, getting paid the fees paid for some of the kids that can't afford it um, we've got a lot of large families that unfortunately you know, the cost can't accumulate so we try to offer that and we also offer a shoe program so um, if you're struggling with just paying the fees and you need some help with getting some shoes paid for uh, we offer that we'll have people there today from shoe sensation that'll be sizing up the kids mm -hmm. so if you need some shoes uh, we'll have some of those we've given out pairs of shoes over the past probably three years now mm -hmm. and uh, the number of shoes we've given out has increased over the years we're very thankful for the Trinity shoe program mm -hmm. uh, and Jenny Thornton I uh, hope I pronounced her last name correctly she's been been a huge help for that so but some of our sponsors we've had we've had some cons pretty consistent sponsors over the last several years Earmore Lakers Lawn Care Dean's Auto Body Crumb Trucking Greaves TV and Appliance CNS Inflatables Alcorn Sage Schwartz and McGrath are big huge sponsors for us so we're very thankful for what they've been able to do for us without them a lot of what we do wouldn't be possible the, the, the equipment we use wouldn't be possible we would still be working with some ancient stuff so um, I can tell you from painting the fields and um, uh, some of the stuff we've dealt with and worked with over the past probably um, several years mm -hmm. having the new equipment makes a difference and it does help speed things up a little bit and makes the field look uh, much nicer so very thankful for these sponsors that always step up every year and we're always looking for more sponsors so if you're uh, I wanted to be part of our uh, sponsorship. In our, we basically put a banner up with your company's name on it and logo. Uh, we put a soccer emblem on the on the banners. We take pictures of it. We take we basically post those pictures on Facebook so people can see who our sponsors are. If you don't happen to make it to the field, uh, I'd recommend anybody in Jefferson County uh, if you want to come over and see what our program really consists of is to come during our jamboree. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'd ask any soccer player that's ever participated with us, they all remember the soccer jamboree. Mm -hmm. It's the only time you really have a soccer thing on, on Saturdays yeah it's uh, the last Saturday in August actually it's gonna be I think it's uh, 20 I want to say 23rd 24th um, it's a full day event everybody that's part of JCSA is there every field will be covered with players and we go from 9 o'clock in the morning and we play games all the way up to about 3 o'clock in the afternoon oh, wow. so and we have to, it's a good fundraiser for us we've got we have a barbecue going on over there and stuff mm -hmm. so I uh, welcome anybody from Jefferson County, outside Jefferson County, come see our program. Some come see our kids, some come see what this thing's about. So um, anyone, I also want to mention that uh, anyone, if, you, if you're not familiar with the game of, uh, of soccer and you want to become a coach or learn more about the game of soccer, to attend our coaches clinic, which will be held Saturday morning, uh, July 28th from 9 to 11. Uh, we'll have some uh, high school coaches and myself over there that will help um, provide some instruction for that. So just want to make you everybody as, as comfortable mm -hmm. with becoming a coach as possible. And it, today, again, during open registration, good time to come over and ask questions about the program. If you've got a kid that uh, maybe maybe not want to play, good good opportunity to kind of get a feel for what it's all about. Yeah, there's probably a lot of kids right now that are on the fence, don't know what they really want to do. Uh, some of them are making the transition from softball, baseball, don't know if, if soccer is the right thing for them I can tell you this my kids uh, when we first got into it we're using soccer as a conditioning sport for sure. other sports mm -hmm. and it became the primary sport of all three of my kids yeah. which is their love and they basically got away from playing any other sport mm -hmm. so they really enjoyed soccer with no pressure from dad sure sure I mean sure. I just I'd always told them you choose you know you choose what you want to do I'd love to see you out there. Right. Obviously, I you know, in some years I coach my kids. Some, right. some years I'd like to see other coaches work with them. And uh, right. we've had some great coaches over the years. Well, good very deal. thankful for those uh, individuals and very thankful for Julie mm -hmm. for what she's done with us over the last three or four years. So, yeah, it, and you you can't you can't have enough sponsors and you can't have enough help. Yep, that's that's two things and you can't always, go without. We're always teaching, yeah. not just the kids. We're teaching. We want to teach parents the game, mm -hmm. and we want everybody to become we want to become a coach. Uh, we can put you in a comfortable position. Yeah. So, all right, eleven to three today, Rucker Sports. Complex open registration. Yep, that's the place to be. Hope, yep. you, hope to see a good turnout. Um, if you don't make it today, we'll be back again on the uh, 23rd mm. from 11 to 3. Uh, you have still see signs posted as you come out. Uh, hopefully, there'll be signs that lead you back to where we are. There'll be a canopy set up sure. uh, next to the parking lot with a bunch of soccer emblems all over it. So, and you'll see our Jefferson County soccer uh, banner that's hanging there, and then you'll find us. And yeah. we'll have questions. Well, if you get questions, you can ask us. We've got uh, coaches uh, pamphlets that we'll hand out. That's that, that were uh, given to us from um, Challenger Sports. Uh, it's something we do when we sign up for their program. They give us free coaching books. Mm -hmm. Gives you exercises and things to do with kids from age three all the way up to 13. Yeah, or even older if that matter. 
All right, Brian, we appreciate you coming in this morning. Appreciate you, Tim. Thanks for having us again. No, no, our pleasure indeed. It's Coach's Corner live from McDonald's. Thanks to the Jefferson County Soccer Association for coming in and talking with us this morning. Again, we'll do it every Saturday morning here from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. Next week, and actually the next three Saturdays, we'll talk Madison Regatta Unlimited Hydroplane Racing. That's the next three Saturdays here at McDonald's. Thanks to A.J. Bramer in studio. I'm Tim Torrance. We'll see you next time for Coach's Corner here on Works 96.7.